Okay. As far as I, I'm concerned, that test proved, proved successful. <clears throat> okay, so what I was saying to Quan's log is a couple things. Um, first of all, I like talking to Quan's log. I'd like to do it more often. I miss a lot of your videos because I need to remember to type in your name and search because you make videos infrequently enough. Anybody that makes videos once a week or less, you know, basically it's a crapshoot if I see your videos. Uh, along with all the AP and C-SPAN, you know, Stanford kind of videos that are in my stupid subscription box. That's a matter of how I think the subscription box should work different than other matter entirely. But I'd like to take my discussions to the next level, and I think talking to people like you, Quan's Log, is, is uh, one way to do that. We do disagree a little bit, but we also agree. So first of all, on things I think we agree on, but let me not bother with that and just simply say how I think the situation is once again, which is that it's a lot simpler. People tell us it's super complicated, that they've been fighting over there for ages, and it's a bit ridiculous because, of course, all human beings have been fighting for ages everywhere, so that's a cop-out. And really, it's not so much in every uh, where they're fighting for all time type of issue. It's not thousands and thousands of years. It's a simple matter of the UK having discovered oil in the Middle East in the early 20th century. That's where it all comes from and then the uh, Iranian revolution, us overthrowing that revolution, putting the Shah back in, you know they noticed all of that stuff. When the British went in there they went in there with an imperial attitude. Not only did they give the Iranians a fucked up deal where they only paid for the crude oil and they didn't educate, you know, they should have educated the Iranians how to become, you know, oil engineers and created colleges and all this money that would come out of it. Um, not only did they not do that, but they even, uh, you know, an audit of the historical book shows that they also screwed the Iranians even out of the amount of crude oil that was extracted. You know, they just wanted to screw these people over and play empire with them. So, you know, they had had enough, they uh, elected a democratic leader, and then found themselves overthrown by a CIA, uh, you know, and secret services, black ops kind of driven coup. And that's all a matter of history. So, you know, they're pissed off, as are most of the other uh, Middle Eastern nations. Now, we have a uh, polar opposite to that, the Saudi uh, family, which went around and, you know, in that same period of time when nobody thought there was oil down there, uh, secured all the land, named it after their family, and eventually uh, hooked up with the, you know, American oil interests. And, of course, the Saudi family found that the wealth was shared with them, but still they have some of the poorest people in the world in these Middle Eastern countries, even when their average income is more than some Western country, um, the median income is way lower. So most people don't, you know, are kept poor in third world, even though the, the wealthy are so wealthy that on average, if you just took all the people and average out the income, it would be a great income, and yet they're not as wealthy as these Western nations where this, theoretically they ought to be more wealthy on average. So you have this weird oppressive situation and, and uh, what's going on here is that you know w uh, there's a lot of natural personality types in humans you know there's the peaceful types and there's the aggressive types and the so on artistic and so on, philosophical scientific engineering types t techies all, all of this depending on the situation you put humans in different personality types are nurtured basically and when you oppress people, uh, radical and psychotic types can be nurtured. And that's where, you know, all of this uh, activity comes from. And the fact that those people don't really understand their situation or put it in terms of a religious uh, conviction, that doesn't matter. What's really going on is that you put them in a situation where the aggressive personality types are the ones that are going to rise to the top. The kind of pressure in the environment uh, causes these radical types to rise to the top. You know, so for example, it's something I said when we before we even started the Iraq War uh, and after we started that 
if we're going to do that, we should build up the Iraq engineering structure, which used to be, you know, pretty impressive and had fallen apart because of sanctions and things like this. We should have not paid Halliburton billions of dollars to go build things, but have invested in local uh, Iraq engineering companies. And I'll bet you then, if we'd done that, the investors would be reaping profits right now as regular old investors, rather than having, you know, ISIS take over the country. Now, having said that, where I think we disagree a bit here is that I, I say no. Go do, keep drawing Muhammad. Every newspaper put a picture of Muhammad because, you know, what is a picture of Muhammad? He doesn't even, ex you know, really exist as a, a photographic entity. We don't know what is or isn't a picture. We're talking about anything you draw, when, especially with the cartoons. If you call it Muhammad, that's a problem. No, that's not the kind of sensitivity. See, we don't need to avoid doing that because that's not the real problem. The problem is not that we disrespect, uh, you know, Muhammad according to their views and, and draw a picture of Muhammad. Plenty of Muslims can handle non-Muslims doing such a thing. The problem is that, you know, we're still raping them, that, that we raped them in the first place and we're like, well, it's hard to talk to them now. Well, if we would stop doing that, you know, that would be a big advantage in this whole situation. You know, stop abusing them, stop uh, taking their crude oil and not developing their country, stop supporting the regimes, you know, the House of Saud that is perpetuating this atrocity. And, uh, you know, we don't even have to stop the, the House of Saud, just stop supporting them. That That's the solution. And there's various, you know, ways to that end. It's, it's not super simple, but you know, at least we can see that that's the kind of solution that we're looking for. Um, you know, just stop uh, uh, raping them and it might become possible to have a discussion. Now, if it's too late because it's all happened and we can't have a discussion, well, fine, we can still improve the situation by stop continuing the oppression right and our support of the dictatorships over there that perpetuated like the house of saud you know i think is a big problem especially since the house of saud has realized hey you put people in this situation they'll become radicalized but we'll create the wahhabis and use those radicals such that they're somewhat you know ironically or weirdly aligned with us or at least you know aligned against something separate from us and kind of do some machiavellian game with that, which is of course bound to backfire and which we're seeing backfire now. And really, you know, the threat to us from these radical elements in the world uh, is minor now compared to what it could be. I mean, their power could be more and we should watch out for that. If this is making us nervous already, then maybe it's time to stop uh, pressing and, you know, stop the rape of the world and uh, and and try to heal at that point and see what we can do once we're really actually trying. You know, so okay, hopefully that recorded better.